I really wanted to make a kind of generational anthem. I wanted to make uh, a film that reminded me of the films that got me interested in filmmaking and acting in the first place. Films like The Breakfast Club, like Clueless, like Dazed and Confused. Those movies are a really important part of my life. And and I, I really was interested in creating that. I also am really inspired by the new generation of actors and comedians. And I think that this generation that's coming up is so awesome and active and smart and hilarious. And I wanted to tap into that and to make something for them. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I talked to Reed every day and she was, you know, she's like, God damn it, you're gonna make Breakfast Club before me? Ah! <laughs> but she was really inspiring and I think she reminded me of, um, you know, what had worked so well for her on her directorial debut, which I produced and I was in and I was there with her for every minute of that, but she reminded me of the lessons she had learned. Um, and, you know, it was perfect that I was making a film about female friendship, leaning on my female friends to help me make the best version of it that I could. Um, I mean, I think it's it was so it was so important. I actually I had the Billy and I went to high school together. We did, and I had the beauty of going back to our high school like a, three weeks I think before we started prep, um, and to like kind of talk to this feminist club which didn't even exist when I was there. So I was like, the world's going in the right direction. Yeah. Um, and I was telling them about Booksmart, and I was just looking at these these amazing, brilliant teenagers, just thinking, oh my god, we get to make a movie for these kids and these kids that we so understand what, what they're going through and they're also geniusly smart and I think so warm and so cool and I think what Liv brought to the project is something that literally no one else could which is this unique blend of warmth, intellect and just this vibe that no one else can capture other than this creature right here. Um, <laughs> Because I think, you know, this film in different hands between Katie and Olivia would, would have been something that they just completely flipped on its head and it just expanded it and made it so beautiful and the soundtrack's so amazing and the cast they assembled is so amazing. So I think we did the teenagers, teenagers of today well. I think we did them right. My character, I've been saying, is basically my id and what the, like, annoying people who voted me most edgy um, as the superlative thought of me. Um, so I pulled a lot of my like 14 year old, 15 year old angst from, I don't know, that's like yeah. Gigi. Gigi is like my id when I was 14, which is kind of scary, but kind of beautiful. It's an iconic performance. <laughs> it's literally I'm an sorry. iconic performance. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry in advance. <laughs> I think that that was the one thing that attracted me to this script so much is that I was going to finally be able to play someone that seemed like me or like my best friend and I think that this movie Booksmart really represents how strong a female relationship can be and I don't think I've really necessarily seen that in a film yet especially a film specifically made for teens and I feel like it really is going to allow um, young people and honestly everyone to feel um, more seen. Yeah, I think one thing that Liv did that helped everyone was to really encourage people to bring their own best friendships. You, we talk about your first best friend is really like your first soulmate. It's such an intense relationship and it informs all your future friendships. And so it was fun to be on a set where everyone got to bring in specific stories of who the people in their lives were who had encouraged them and inspired them. And we all, I think, reached out to most of our, I mean, some of our high school friends were in the movie. But like one thing I love about when people watch the movie is that their reaction right afterwards is that that they want to call their high school best friend and, and re-engage if they're not engaged with the person who was that first soulmate for them. So I think we all did it. I mean, I went to an all-girls school and I have, they're still my best friends. And it's, I think those relationships that you're able to keep with you as you evolve, because they're so foundational when you're there, are will inform everything you do going forward. And so it was really fun to bring that here. The circumstances are that they have this mission to prove their multidimensionality. They want to be seen. They 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 can't bear the thought, specifically Molly can't bear the thought <laughs> of, of not being fully understood. It's very frustrating to think she has failed at something. Um, and so she needs to prove to everyone that she can succeed at all things. What it does is instigates this incredible adventure that 
you know, unbeknownst to Amy, she really needed personally. In a way, it was a gift to push Amy into this adventure. But Molly is doing it because she does not want to be pigeonholed. I think that's really important. I don't think they really care about, you know, going to a party. It's not about trying to assimilate. This isn't one of those teen movies where the girls take off their glasses and take their hair out of the buns and they're like, now we're popular and everything's wonderful. It's much <laughs> more... Uh, about, you know, really understanding their own value. I've never thought of Revenge of the Nerds as a good comp for us, <laughs> but actually, it's not bad. Um, but I think that there is an important part of this that's like, we're showing women to be truly hilarious in a way that I think also hasn't been done in a long time. I think, you know, the reason Bridesmaids, for instance, really struck a chord is people were so taken by authenticity in friendship between women and really funny friendship at that in the way that women recognize, wait, that's how my best friend and I laugh. I don't think those comedies are usually written for women. Unfortunately, sometimes now I feel that they're written in a guy's voice put into an actress's mouth and we have a different way of communicating and everyone is so different. These characters are specifically hilarious through this very intelligent sort of voice. Um, and so we were able to create situations for them to be hilarious without uh, sacrificing kind of who they, are, who they are and what makes them different. There's a specificity to the comedy that I find so, so hilarious. And I think that's what people are reacting well to. And it's because the actors brought their incredible timing. It's not easy to get an, an ensemble like this that all has killer comedic timing. But I, I truly take pride in creating something where people can recognize women are really funny and, uh, and, and in a way that's very different than guys.